Grace Munira and welcome to Horse Pro, the channel dedicated to empowering the amateur horse enthusiast and supporting the budding professional. Now, before we get started with today's wonderful upcoming interview with Mark Grice, I would like you to hit the subscribe button and the like icon if you find anything of value in today's interview. I would like to welcome Mark Grice, who has been a professional horseman for most of his adult life and transformed into a professional artist with a very successful business and now, most excitingly, a published author. So today we're going to discuss Mark's novel, his first novel, which is doing really well, and it is called Paint the Horse Blue. And I find that uh, the interesting subject of an author to, out of a horse industry, uh, from a professional to a published author, I think it's of value to find out what the journey was and how Mark got here. Mark, firstly, I'd like to thank you for being here today. My pleasure. And I know you came from an active uh, show world. Yeah. And we were just discussing, you still ride, you're yes. still very active in the horses. Exactly. Now, when you decided to move into uh, being a professional artist, how did that then lead you into being a professional author? Well, in the horse industry, we all gather a lot of stories you know, yes. in our travels. And so, so many interesting things happen to you when you're a full-time horse trainer, whether on the farm or on the road. And uh, even in my travels, you know, I, I really started in the industry as a teenager. Uh, working on a ranch in Nebraska as a 15 year old. Oh my gosh. And so I, a variety of experiences from the rodeo world to hunting world, uh, showing quarter horses, well with the hunter circuit, even a bit of dressage. So I've sort of got a well-rounded background in that and you just collect all these little stories. And about 10 years ago, there was something happened in my life and I don't know, just a, a switch turned and, and, <laughs> and it was like, this should be a book, right? It, what is right. happening right now should be a book. So. Um, I sort of changed characters. None of the characters are real people. None of them are me, although I say all of them are me. Yes. And at the same time, I draw on little bits of experiences and then just, just fantasy, really, and come up with fiction, things that could happen in the industry amongst people that we all know are in the horse industry and outside of the horse industry, just people in the community. It's not just a book for horse people, although horse right. people will find it authentic because I come from sort of an expert opinion. However, people that are non-horse people are, love the fact that the relationships in it and the journey that you go to in the book. Now, when you say that, it's really interesting. We're going to touch on a few points. Now, when you got the idea about 10 years ago, did it take you that long to write the book? Or what was your, how, artistically, how did, it, how did it come about over that so, time span? So, over that time, it was always a case of this is something I, I need to do in right. my life. And, I just kept collecting fragments in my mind. Nothing was written down, just collected fragments in my mind. And finally I got, to, about a year and a half ago, I got more motivated that it was time to really right. get this down. And I just started writing down little notes on paper, of just little turning points in the plot. It didn't really connect together, but just things I found would be really interesting. Then I started laying them out on a piece of paper, on a, on a table, <laughs> and I literally moved them around until this was the plot of the story. Right. And some things I had to research at the research uh, museum and so on. The story spans a hundred years of history. So I had to do my research. But then I, uh, I said to someone, you know, I've got all this idea for a book and somebody sort of challenged me kind of like, well, when are you going to start? And that was the point where, okay, I'm, I bought a new laptop. I downloaded a program for novel writing and I wrote the whole thing in Starbucks. Oh my gosh! So that's a that's a so that's a lucky Starbucks. Maybe when they will be a little. Uh, I, I don't uh, want to notify them in case they change their loitering <laughs> their loitering policy. They might say you know twenty minutes maximum that's here. Right. I spent hours writing my book on a cup of coffee. Uh, every word was written in, in Starbucks. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Now, how did that compare to, for instance, um, plotting a painting and doing a painting? How how did you find that? Is one more cathartic than the other? Well, or? with my paintings, um, unlike some artists, I envision exactly how it's going to look at right. the end, and I know the path I'm going to take to get there. And really the same with the book. I knew exactly what right. every chapter was going to be, and I could then jump ahead and write chapter 35 if that was of interest to me today, because I already knew what was going to happen in chapter 32 or whatever. Right. And so, kind of like my approach to painting. Now, some Artists begin a painting very loosely and they don't know what's going to, the, the colors and the brushes are going to tell them what's, what's going to happen. Go. That's 
And some authors start that way with right. some characters and locations, and they let the characters tell them what's going to happen. I experienced that a little bit with my book, that things took little side trips that I didn't wasn't expecting once I, I thought about that character. But overall, I envisioned the whole thing start to finish, and that really helped me keep it organized in the mind. Now, prior to Paint the Horse Blue, had you ever had any writing experience? Well, I've certainly written a lot of articles for horse magazines right. and so on, uh, more instructional kind of things. And then I write a bunch of cowboy poetry. And cowboy poetry is a very small genre, but it's something that once you discover it, it's larger than you expect. And we have a, an opportunity in, in that to sort of tell stories in modern voice. Um, some cowboy poetry is more historical, but ours is more, what I write is very present day. And so I've written and performed that cowboy poetry, not published, and so I, I do put some of the cowboy poetry into the book as well. So you have your hand in every oh, bit yeah. of, of, a lot of artistry, lot of whether things. it's yeah. spoken or whether it's visual or anything like that. Exactly. Now, the one other point I want to touch on is the authenticity of the horsemanship in the novel. Sure. Now, prior to writing Paint the Horse Blue, did you think to yourself, wow, in some of these novels that um, have stables, horsemen, horsewomen, horses as a backdrop, we've all seen the horrible movies mm -hmm. where they juxtapose oh, yeah. colors of horses. Exactly. Was that a goal of yours to give uh, real credit and credence to the horse world? Absolutely. One of the characters in the um, book is a farrier. And so, you know, when you're talking about oh, shooting yeah. a horse, you better get it right. And of course, I'm not a farrier myself, but I'm Watch fair, <laughs> watch fair, I, 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 I like to think I could do it if I had to, and uh, so I want to make sure that that alone is authentic, the equipment's authentic, but also I didn't want to go down one sort of rabbit hole, I wanted to appeal to people right. in the hunter industry, in the western industry, you know, in a variety of racing industry, we right. touch on a lot of things in the People world. with the horse passion. Exactly. And you'll learn a little about, about the thing you don't know. So that's right. That's Which I think is really challenge. valuable, and I think that's what gives every uh, piece of, or every novel ever written, if you can come from a place of um, some knowledge and authenticity, I think people then really grasp onto that. And that's what makes the, the novel entertaining. Yep. Now, did you do the cover? Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> painted, painted the cover of the book, and you can see uh, the illustration on the uh, poster here and on the cover here. So this is a uh, just a fictitious farm. I kind of pieced together uh, bits of a, a, a few different photographs that I saw. And then you'll come to a point in the book, and you'll realize, you'll look back at the cover, and you'll say, this is That's the moment this. that we're at right now. Wow. It was at that moment in the book. So I don't want to give you any more clues. And was that exciting kind of when you were writing it? Like, do you get to that point yourself as a writer and do you kind of get a bit of a thrill at that point? Or? Well, I didn't know what I didn't know what I was going to put on the cover. I kind of had some ideas. And even the title of the book, um, you find the title twice in the book. It's spoken by different That's characters. Right. And you'll find it. So at the very start, I didn't know what the title was going to be. Um, when I was writing it, I had some other kind of working titles That's in mind. Right. And then the title kind of revealed itself. And the, the cover, sort of the same thing with the cover. I sort of, this was a turning point in the book at this moment. And, um, you know, I don't want to give away too much more of that. But when you get to this moment, you'll, you'll look back on the cover and you'll maybe find something you didn't see before. And find something that is maybe a little bit more uh, in-depth for people. Yes. Yes. Now, are you writing another? Is there uh, another that's, one coming? So, interesting. Uh, a lot of people have read this book and they've said, oh, I want more. I want to hear the sequel. Uh, a lot of people uh, have... Uh, love the characters and they're saying right. what happened next uh, the end came just kind of oh, abruptly too soon. too soon I want to see what happens oh, next people. so the opportunity is certainly there for me to expand on the life of these characters and, and move forward with that I so it's something I'm concerned with so, I think so that's I might, fabulous I might sort of stick with that theme as I move forward well and you never know folks maybe Netflix HBO you know yeah, hey I, let's I uh, definitely wrote it with a movie in there, yeah so. let's see if that takes yeah. uh, takes flight and I wish it does now for people who are interested in acquiring a copy yes. for those out there who haven't read it now where can they find it and I will include it all in the description below for anyone who is looking to purchase a copy of Paint the Horse Blue. So it's available in three formats. People can write it, um, download it online onto their Kindle yes. video version or anything like that. And then it's in soft cover and this hardcover version as well. If you Google the book, you're going to find many sources, iTunes, uh, 
uh, Amazon, right. Barnes and Noble, any online book source, you're going to find Paint the Horse Blue there, and you can order it directly from there, and they ship it to you. So excellent. So again, if anybody would like. Oh, and to... one more thing. Oh yes. They can find me in person, and I'll sign their copy. <gasps> and I'm going to give you, this, you this signed copy as well. So. Ah, I am a lucky girl today. <laughs> so, folks, if anybody really needs to uh, fill some wintry days, some sunshine reading, some Makes vacation a good gift, reading. Right? That's right. We have Christmas coming up. We have Thanksgiving. So if anybody needs to acquire a copy, and you can have one signed by Mark Price if yep. you're so lucky to be in Caledon, Ontario, then I'd really love for you to read in the description below, support Mark in his new novelist adventure. Also, Interestingly enough, if you would like to look up Mark uh, Grice on Google, there's a fascinating version of his life as a writer, a painter, an actor, and an author. And it's been my pleasure today to bring Mark Grice to you with his novel, Paint the Horse Blue. And I endeavor and, and wish him the most success, especially in terms of a movie. And of course, I hope that everyone out there rushes out to buy a copy. Mark. Thank you very much. Thank you I very really much. appreciate you speaking with me. My today. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.